children. Hope you are doing good. Okay. So in our today's class, we are going to see something different. That is reading comprehension. Reading comprehension from the chapter The King and I. What's the meaning of reading comprehension? Reading comprehension is to enhance your reading skills. Right. So reading comprehension, we do read the passage. We understand the passage. We find answers for the questions that are asked from the passage itself. That is to enhance our reading skill that is within us. Shall we do an example from the King and I lesson? Come, let's do. The steamer from Singapore dropped anchor at Bangkok. A woman leaned on the ship's waist, a small son beside her. Looking at the towering walls of magnificent palace where the king of Sam lived. The year was 1862 and the woman was Anna Lillianovitz. She had to come to take up the post of governess to the children of the royal family. I have 67 children, said the king proudly. When he met her, you shall teach them. The king was a thin little old man, clad in a cloth of gold. He sat cross-legged on his throne like a golden grasshopper with his glittering eyes fixed on the slender and English woman who stood before him. Okay, so what you know here? The steamer from Singapore dropped anchor at Bangkok. What's the meaning of steamer here? Steamer is actually a long chain uh, from a vessel which used to drop anchor into the ocean, into the water. Anchor means and that means the heavy object which stops uh, boat, which stops boat uh, when, when it goes, when it sails on the ocean. So the steamer from Singapore, so the steamer, the long chain which had come from Singapore, drop and drag. So the anchor is tied upon with the steamer. So it is dropping the anchor into the water. The drop anchor at Bangkok, in the Bangkok Ocean, it is dropping into the water. A woman leaned on the ship's face, her small son beside her, looking at the towering walls of magnificent palace where the king of Siam lived. Now, who was in the boat? There was a woman with her son beside her. What was she doing? She was leaning on the ship's face. Then what say? The iron bars which we have to take for support. So, she was leaning on the iron bars, iron bars like face it was. So she was leaning on the ship's rail, her small son beside her, having her son beside her, looking at the towering walls of magnificent palace where the king of Siam lived. Now she is looking at the high tower walls of the grand palace, magnificent palace is grand palace where the king of Siam lived. So the Siam king's grand palace, high tower walls palace. The year was 1862. And the woman was Anna Learovel. So the lady who was in the boat was Anna Learovel. And the year when she travelled is 1862. She had to come up to take up the post of governess to the children of the royal family. So what was the purpose of coming there? Yes, she had to take up post of governess. What is the meaning of governess here? Teaching the post of teaching to children, teaching to children who are from royal family. So the teacher who is teaching this to the children of royal family. So she has come here for the post of governess to the children of the royal family. So she is here to teach the children of the royal family. I have 67 children, said the king proudly. So now she is meeting the king of Siam and the king is saying to her, king is just explaining to her that how many children he has. He has 67 children for teaching. When he met her, you shall teach them. So now he is proudly saying to her when he met her that you shall teach 67 children who are with us. The king was a thin little old man clad in a cloth of gold. So what was he wearing? He was covering cloth which was made up of gold. So he was a thin little old man. So his appearance was very thin and he was a little old man. He sat cross-legged on his throne like a golden grasshopper with his glittering eyes fixed on a slender and English woman who stood before him. He sat cross-legged. What's the meaning of cross-legged? 
one one leg over the other leg. So he sat cross leg on his throne. Throne is the royal servant seat where the king used to sit. The seat of a king. So he was sitting cross leg on his chair like a golden grasshopper, like a golden insect, like a locust with his glittering eyes. So the appearance and the uh, efficiency of the king is explained here. Glittering eyes. Fixed on the slender and English woman, the small and English woman who stood before him. So she was standing in front of the king, and the king is also explaining her that there are sixty-seven students with us. You can teach her. Hope you understood the lesson. Let me read once again. Just listen. The steamer from Singapore dropped anchor at Bangkok. A woman lay on the ship's rails. His small son beside her. Looking at the towering walls of magnificent palaces, where the king of Siam lived, the year was 1862, and the woman was Anna Leopold. She had to come up to take the post of governess to the children of the royal family. I have sixty-seven children," said the king proudly. "When we meet them, you shall teach them." The king was a thin little old man, clad in a cloth of gold. He sat cross-legged on his throne. Like a golden grasshopper, with his glittering eyes fixed on the slender young English woman who stood before him. Okay, children. Now we read the passage and we understood the passage too. Now the step, the next step we have to move on is answering the questions. So few questions will be given. You have to read the questions first. What are the questions? See the first question. What was the name of the lady? And the next question, where did the steamer come from? Third question: Where did the steamer drop anchor? Next one: Why had Anna Leopold come to Bangkok? Now we read the questions too. We need to find the answers from the passage. First question: What was the name of the lady? See, try to make answers from the question itself. So the name of the lady I have used here past tense. So you also have to use only past tense. The name of the lady was. What is the name of the lady here? See, can you find out anywhere here? Yes, here. The woman was Anna Leorevans. Right. So, what you have to do is, what you find the answer from there, and you have to write here, framing answer from the question itself. So, the name of the lady, the name of the lady, the name of that you see here is was was Anna Leorevans. That's all. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to add anything. Extra for making it wrong. See what's the next question. Where had the steamer come from? Where had the steamer come from? So our, our answer is same answer for the question. The steamer had come from. I used past perfect case. The steamer had come from. From where? See here in our first lesson we got the answer. The steamer from Singapore. So the steamer had come from Singapore. And the next question. Where did the steamer drop anchor? Where did the steamer drop anchor? The steamer drop the anchor. So I used did she at past tense and the verb is drop. So you have to add ed with the verb. The steamer drop anchor at Bangkok. See, drop anchor at Bangkok. The steamer from Singapore drop anchor at Bangkok. So that's this. The steamer drop anchor at Bangkok. The next question. Why had Anna Leopold come to Bangkok? What was the reason? What was the purpose of coming to Bangkok? See here, the year was eighteen sixty-two, and the woman was Anna Leopold. She had come to take up the post of governess to the children of royal family. So we found the answer here. What's the answer here then? The name of the lady is Anna Leopold. Given here, Anna Leopold had. Come to Bangkok to take up the post of governess to the children of royal family. That's all, children. If you understood the passage, if you read the passage clearly and understood the passage, it is easy, easy for you to do. Okay, children. So far we have completed our reading comprehension. So the next part that we have to see is grammar part. That is the book bag exercises of our lesson and extraordinary hand. So in book bag exercises we have. Adverb. As a grammar part, we have adverb. So let's see the definition of adverb first. See, adverb is a verb which modifies the meaning of a verb, an adjective, or another adverb, a phrase.
phrase or a clause. Adverb is a verb which modifies the meaning of a verb, an adjective or another adverb, a phrase or a clause. It describes action verbs sometimes we are elbowing with an adjective to get an adverb. So, uh, let's see here, we all know what is the verb, right? So, we all know what is the verb, what is an action verb. Here, adverb is a verb which modifies the uh, action, which modifies the verb, the meaning of the verb which is given in the sentence. So, adjective, if we take adjective, it modifies the meaning of a noun. So, when it comes to adverb, it modifies the meaning of a verb in the sentence, that is action verb. So, maximum it describes the action verb. And uh, see in the sentence, if an adjective is given and you are asked to change an adverb, what do you have to do? You have to add LY with an adjective verb. So, sometimes we add LY with an adjective verb to get an adverb. So, with the adjective verb, when we add LY, we get an adverb too. So, adverb is a verb that describes, that, uh, describes some action verbs and uh, it modifies the meaning of a verb given in a sentence. Okay. So, uh, we will go with exercises for better clearance. Take page number 40 exercises. Fill in the blanks choosing the adverbs given in brackets. Take your books and write when I explain itself. Fill in the blanks choosing the adverbs given in brackets. See the first one. I have read this story. So, in this, what is given is you are asked to pick one answer from all these three answers from the brackets and you need to use the hint which is given. So, by using the hint which is given, you need to find the answer. See here, I have read the story before, the answer is before. Because the hint word is when here. The hint word which is given, when. See all these three answers twice. Twice answers for how many times? Before. Before answers for when. Loudly. Loudly answers for how. So, see here, what is the hint word? Hint word is when. So, what answers for when here? Before, yes. So, I have read the story before. So, it's very easy when you use it with the, when you find, try to find answers using the hint given. And the next one, I hear the song dash. The hint word is how often, how often. See the answers here. Today, fluently, frequently. Which answers are from among all these three answers? Which one answers for the hint word, how often? Yes, frequently. So, I hear this song frequently. I hear this song frequently. See the third one. She spoke dash. She does how? How did she speak? So, the answer up. Softly, yesterday, everywhere. See here. Everywhere answers for the question where. And yesterday answers for the question when. When it comes to softly, it answers for the question how. So our answer is softly. She spoke softly. It answers for how. And the next one, Mohan met Rohit dash. And the hint word is where. Where did Rohit? Uh, Mohan met Rohit. See the words today, there, Rani. Today answers for when. Rani answers for how often. And there answers for where. So we get the answer here. There answers for where. Mohan met Rohit there. Fifth one. Preeti was mistaken. Dash. King word is how much. King word is how much. See which answers for how much here. Completely, sweetly, already. Completely, sweetly, already. So completely answers for how much here. So Preeti was mistaken. Completely. So, what you have to do? You have to read the question, find the uh, three words, find the bracket words which are given, and see the hint word, and choose any one answer that answers for the hint word here. That's all. Let's see only the exercises. I have read this story before. I hear this song frequently. She spoke softly. Mohan met Robert there. Pretty was mistaken. Completely. Complete all these in your book pages also. We will be seeing the next exercise. Okay.
children, you see the next exercise now. See, this exercise uh, depends upon what we have seen in our definition of hard work. So, in our definition, we have seen that sometimes we add ly with an adjective word to make it an adverb, right? So, with the adjective word, if we add ly, it will become an adverb. That's what we are going to see here. So, the example is here. Fill in the blanks. The same page number 41 uh, in the same format. Fill in the blanks by changing the adjectives given in brackets into adverbs. Kindly fill in, it with, fill in your book when I am explaining itself, don't be delaying. So fill in the blanks by changing the adjectives given in brackets into adverbs. So what you have to do, the bracket words, bracket words are given in adjective form. You have to change it into adverb form. So what do you have to do? Yes, we need to add L Y with the adjective verb to make it an adverb. So see the first one. We must protest dash against Jody. And the bracket word which is given, strong. What do we have to do now? We need to add L Y with strong. Strong plus L Y strongly. So we must protest strongly against Jody. So strongly is an adverb. So we must protest. Strongly against Jowry. Next one. The shopkeeper kept the book dash for him. The word given here is save. So when we add a word this, safely. The shopkeeper kept the book safely for him. The shopkeeper kept the book safely for him. The next one. The rope was hung dash. The word is horizontal. The word is horizontal. So the rope was hung. When we add alpha with it, it will become horizontal. So horizontal is an adjective. When we add alpha with this, it will become an adverb. The rope was hung horizontally. Next one. He called dash. The word is desperate. Word word here is desperate. Add alpha with it. Yes. The word then the answer is he called desperately for help. He called desperately for help. The girls are screaming that. Girl is loud. If you add elbow with it, it will be loudly. The girls are screaming loudly. Next one. He lives very. The word is simple. When you add elbow, you will take out this E and add elbow. Simply. He lived very simply. It's so easy when you understand the concept. So, for making an adjective word into an adverb, you need to add elbow with an adjective word, then it will become an adverb. So, that's what we, we have seen here. Let's see uh, the examples once. We must protest strongly against Jowry. The shopkeeper kept the book safely for him. The rope was hung horizontally. He called desperately for help. The girls were screaming. He loved. He lived very simply. He lived very simply. Okay, so then we have completed our book of book of existing understanding. I hope that you have understood the adverbs and adjectives, what is an adverb and how to make an adjective word into an adverb. Okay, so then we will meet you on with a very new session. Thank you all.